The dark side of Japan. This is the. Can it get darker than what we just watched? We'll see. Pan that you all used to see. Beautiful mountains, modern technology, and ancient temples. But did you know that you can't go into public swimming pools or bathhouses if you have tattoos? Yeah, I do know that because when we went to Japan, Liv could go in these things. She always went. And I stayed in the hotel room because I have tattoos all over me. I went to the gym and I had to cover my whole body up. I don't know if y'all saw the picture. I might just post it here for this for the video. But I was I had tape on my neck. I had long sleeves, and I, and I wore gloves to hide my my hand tattoos. And that's how I went to the gym. Or that many people are so overworked they often sleep in the streets. Or I didn't see that. Decide to disappear. But I know it's, it an happens. Entirely new life. This is the dark side of Japan. Something that's been around for a long. I don't know what part of Japan this is, bro. I didn't see this. Long time. In the if I saw anybody with a tattoo in Japan, they looked like they could murder me. That's how rare it was. But they always looked like like anime characters. That's what they looked like. Country is the Japanese yakuza or Japanese organized crime group. Yakuza have been in existence for over 300 years, tracing back. I wish they got their hands on um that Somali kid. I prayed for that to happen, but they couldn't find him. Maybe it'll happen in the future. We could only pray. To 1612, when they started to attract the attention of the government, they are organized into families and group members for mutual protection, having similar rituals and format to the samurai. In fact, it was believed that yakuza's are descended from gangs of ronins or wayward samurais. The Japanese yakuza engage in extortion, blackmail, smuggling, drug trafficking, gambling, loan sharks and other activities that control restaurants, bars, and companies all over the cities. So they're not like, I don't know, they're, they're, they, do they like, uh, I'm just gonna say the word, I don't care. Do they do like rape shit? Or like uh, human trafficking, did he say that? Blackmail, word samurais. The Japanese Yakuza engage in extortion, blackmail, smuggling, drug trafficking. Drug trafficking, not human trafficking. Gambling. Loan sharks. I could get past the gambling and loan shark stuff. I don't know about and other the other activities stuff, though. I don't that know. control restaurants, bars, and companies all over the cities. Yakuza members often have elaborate tattoos that have their meanings. Members of a clan often have the same. Ta God, man, look at this picture. Tattoos. Like, like these aren't just normal tattoos. Like, like a, like a, a, a dragon on their fucking arm, like me or Princess Leia. Look at this shit. This is full body tat but with a strict requirement. They should not be visible in everyday life. You might also recognize them by their missing pinky fingers. Oh my God. That's crazy. Often, Yakuza have to undergo yubitsume, or finger shortening, to pay back- Why, so you can't put a pinky in the stinky? Is that why they take it off? For their wrongdoings. They reached their height in the 1960s with over 184,000 members. But nowadays, their numbers have dwindled. To yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, you're right. That's pinky promise to the next level, bro. Fuck doing this. You gotta give your pinky. Now that's the pinky promise in Japan. 40,000. This could be due to the laws established in 2011 that made it illegal for businesses to give money or make transactions with gang members. The Yakuza is also why the Japanese are very strict about tattoos, as it's often synonymous with the organized crime group. In Japan, People with tattoos are banned from entering both onsens. Do I look like a Yakuza member? Do I look like I'm in a gang? You know what I mean? Like, I feel like there should be, like, a little law of just common sense in Japan when it comes to that, right? Like, do I look like I'm part of a <laughs> Japanese gang? I have a fucking butterfly on my neck. I have a flower on my hand. What do you mean I kinda do? <laughs> like, damn. I can't go to the gym without covering myself up completely? Like my whole body has fucking COVID? It's crazy. Hot springs, ryokin, traditional inns, sento, public baths, pools, gyms, or even- Like, what if I went to a bathhouse? Are they gonna look at me? Stay away from him. He's a gang leader some capsule hotels the rules were made it should only apply to like locals but if you're as white as day like me i don't think i'm part of a yakuza bro 
to keep the gang members from certain spaces. Aside from association with the Yakuza, there was also a time in the Edo period when- Bro, the way he says Yakuza, it sounds like a fucking instrument. Criminals were punished with tattoos. Y'all learn how to play the Yakuza when you were a kid? And sex workers would have tattoos to show romantic devotion to customers. Tattoos were deemed illegal during the Meiji period, 1868 to 1912. Although it was- No, they do care, even if you're not Japanese, bro. If you have tattoos, it doesn't matter. Like, I remember talking to the guy at the gym. He told me, like, because when I signed up at the gym, he told me it's fine if I talk to him like that, but if I want to go through the doors, I need to cover up completely. They don't give a fuck. Legalized again in 1948. The stigma continues, and people with tattoos still have limited options. Imagine going up to a Yakuza member and being like, um, oh, so you're part of the Yakuza when it comes to bathing facilities. You might be familiar with the Fukushima tragedy. Oh In 2011, a 15-meter tsunami disabled the Fukushima Daiichi reactors, causing a nuclear accident where three cores melted. The incident is rated level 7 by the International Nuclear and Radiological Event Scale, the most serious... God, man, it's so fucking devastating. Like, I can't even imagine this happening. ...level. Fast forward to August... That's why I'm never living near water. Never. I don't give a fuck where I am, bro. I don't care if it's a lake. Somehow it's gonna be a tsunami with a lake. I don't care. I don't trust it. I'll never live by water. 2023, when the government decided to release treated radioactive water into the Pacific Ocean, Japan had already received a green light from the UN, as the analyzed value of radioactivity is 1,500 becquerels per liter of tritium, much lower than the 60,000 becquerels per liter of tritium standard. China immediately placed a ban on all Japanese aquatic products, and people in Japan, Hong Kong, and South Korea have voiced their concerns through protests. Some have turned to Reddit to discuss this issue. Some people have mentioned that the results of the research have shown that they are as radioactive as bananas, Jesus so there's nothing Christ. to worry about. A lot of people still expressed concern. Chernobyl was seven, by the way? Oh my god as they're just diluting the radioactive water with seawater to lower the concentration and pretend it's safe. To put the rumors to rest, Japan's Prime Minister Fumio Kishida ate a fish caught in Fukushima and his office released a video on social media. Ironically, it was found that China, which banned Japanese products due to this incident, had a nuclear power plant that released about three times more tritium than Fukushima. South Korea's Kori nuclear power plant also had similar amounts. Another side of Japan that you don't often see- Oh my god. Holy shit, this is like on some Fallout shit, man. We just started watching Fallout. Damn, the shit that Japan has to go through is crazy. No, that's insane, man. That's why I'm never living near an ocean. I'm never living by a lake. I'm never living anywhere that gets earthquakes. I'm never living by um uh 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 uh, uh, uh what's on that level? A school like an elementary school? Never, bro. I'm living far away from all of that bullshit. Never. That's why I'm never going to California. I'm never I'm never going to um Hawaii. Like living on Hawaii. I know people that live on Hawaii. I can never, never live in Iceland. The going, fuck? What? You said you're never going. To I'll go, but not live. Like, we're gonna buy a million dollar house in California and then it gets totaled? No. What do you mean, no? No, we wouldn't move to California. That's what I mean. The taxes are too high. Yeah, the taxes are high. For what? For my high. house to get earthquaked? It's nice to visit. To get fucking earthquake cooned? I'm not dealing with that. Doesn't America have tornadoes? I'll go somewhere that doesn't. We don't have tornadoes in New York. It's very, very, very... Yeah, I, I mean, when was the last, I remember hurricane, but that shit happens like once in my life. It wasn't even that serious over here. It's like every other year. Japan has tsunamis, earthquakes. Yeah, like I couldn't, man. My biggest fear is drowning. If I have to, if I, I don't know, man, drowning or, or burning alive or some shit. Water and fire. In other countries is their maid cafes. These are cosplay themed. Dude, the maid cafes are all over the place. And the scary part is... I don't even know how old these girls are. I feel like some of them looked like they were like 13. I'm not even lying. Some of them looked 13 and some of them looked 113. Themed cafes where staff are dressed up in maid outfits and serve customers. It's so popular among otakus that there are around 60 maid cafes in Aki- Like we were gonna go to one, but like a cute one. You know what I mean? But they are handing shit out all day long. They just stand outside. 
the bar alone. For the most part, it's a fun and harmless experience, but there is some dark side to this industry. It's said that the work environment is very stressful and some maids have panic attacks during working hours. The maids are also forbidden to put on weight and keep their figures in I did not know this shit was real before I went to Japan, man. I mean, before we started researching Japan, I had no idea this anime shit was actually real with maid cafes, man. It seems like it, it doesn't seem real. But then you go there and it's fucking real. Real real, it's really real. It's as slim as possible. There's also a hierarchy within the maids with foreign maids being at the bottom of it. Oh my God, it's a hierarchy. You have like the king maid, the queen maid, then you have the peasant maid, you have the lieutenant maid, the captain maid. Jesus, right. I should be a maid. Customers also have forums where they would discuss maids in sexually explicit ways. Another term that's unique to Japan is the salary men. Salary men are salaried workers or white collar workers who are very loyal to their corporation. They're so loyal that most salarymen work between 12 to 18 hours a day. Mapa. Some have even called them derogatory terms like kaishi no inu, company's dogs, or shakichu, I'm not reading these, these words. The hard day of Japanese corporate workers begin. Yeah, man, we watched a video on this already about Japan and like um, their work culture and shit. This is one of the worst things, bro. Between the work culture and now the maid shit and the sex. Early in the morning when people have to stuff themselves into an overfilled train. These trains are so This is one of the worst things. You would think this is fake. This is fucking real. I almost had a panic attack on a train in Japan. Remember that? Liv. What? Remember when I was on the train I had to get off because it was too packed? Yep. Yeah. You don't like crowds. I don't like crowds. I fucking hate crowds. One time. What? It was only one time that it was too crowded for you. Yeah, like I remember like the gym was really packed one day. I, it was when I was um living upstate New York. And I was on a treadmill. Everybody was next to me, but it was too packed. I, so I fucking, I farted. And I, cause I had a meatloaf the previous night. So I farted and all of them ran, all of them left to other treadmills. It was great. Like sometimes that's what you gotta do. If you go on a train, just fart. If it's too packed, just let some gas, so pass some gas. And I promise you they'll lose, they'll leave. You'll have the whole cart to yourself. No, it's not disgusting. It's smart. Think about it. Especially if you have like a, I was gonna say arachnophobia. Oh my god, claustropho if you're claustrophobic, bro, just pass some gas. I'm telling you, it works. I've done it before, and I'm not ashamed of it. So full that the government decided to have a staff specifically tasked with cramming people in. Then they'll work away in the office until nighttime. They work so late that they can only blow off steam in late night spots like izakayas or pachinkos. Sometimes. The salary men get so God. tired from working that some have to sleep on the street, so train, sad, or even the sidewalk. Often, many families wouldn't be able to see much of their father since they work so much. Corporate workers in Japan are also facing dangerous consequences for their lifestyle. I don't even know how you fix this. I said this last time, there's no fixing this. I feel like it's just going to get worse and worse because this is just in their society now. It's just part of them. Like, how do you fix this? You can't. Suffering from heart conditions strokes, My God. mental health issues. Sometimes you can see people screaming and punching a hole in the wall in the street. I, I want to be honest. Why do you think so much anime is high school or like elementary school? Like most animes I watch, it's kids, teenagers. Why do you think that? It's because of shit like this. Because once you get out of high school in Japan, this is the world. This is the fucking world. So their last, like, glimpse or memory of adolescence of, like, having fun and shit was when they were a kid or when they were a teenager. So they write their stories from that perspective. What the fuck are they going to make about being an adult? The whole anime is going to be working in a cubicle and not seeing your family for 14 hours? Who wants to write a story about that? Who wants to watch that shit? I want to watch a story about MAPPA, an animated MAPPA. Like, no, no one wants to watch that. So they make JJK, a story about children and teenagers. And they, like, draw them to be like adults. So it's like, yeah, they look like adults, but they're actually teenagers. And that's, you know, the illusion right there. That, that would be me. I mean, I'm a YouTuber. It's different. My life is fun right now. I'm having more fun right now than I've ever had. Traveling the world and shit. That's not a flex. It's just, like, that's how it is, right? But for Japan, or even for you guys... You miss like your teen being a teenager. I don't miss it. I was fucking bullied. I had a terrible time as a teenager. I had good times when I was a kid. 
But a lot of y'all, if you were to write a story, you'd probably write a story as somebody that's like a teenager. You wouldn't write one as an adult because adult life is fucking boring. My friends, all my best friends, they're not YouTubers. They live normal lives. They go to work, they come home, they go to bed. And they play games or something. They say they fucking hate their lives. They're so bored. They're not going to write a story about that. They're going to write a story about when they were like a kid or something. So, like, I get it. I get why these mangakas, and, and they just write stories about kids and teenagers. People are like, oh, they're a pedophile. They're writing about a little kid. Bro, you'd write one, too, if you live a life like this. Streets of Tokyo because of stress. Sadly, these meltdowns are so common that most people would just walk past each other as if nothing is wrong. The worst case is called Kuroshi, death by overworking. The first Jesus. case of Kuroshi was recorded in 1969. Imagine dying from overworking. Like, that's so sad, man. You work to live, but you're working to the point where you die. And when a newspaper company employee died of a stroke at the young age of 29. Some like you work to live, but you're still not living. I mean, I'm going to be honest with y'all. That's why, like, I needed YouTube to work for me because it's like... I was I was working and I wasn't living at all, and I didn't go to college, so it's not like I could use a degree to get a job that I wanted to do. I wasn't that smart. I could have go to college and pass and become like a radio guy and get into all of this shit. My life was gonna be fucking UPS. My life was gonna be loading trucks and unloading trucks. That was my fucking life. And I get home when people are waking up to go to work. So my day ends when their day begins. So my whole life was flipped. And that's a lot of people's lives. All my coworkers when I worked there, they were all, like, they were there for 40 years. They married people that were working there. Like, they met their other half working. I wasn't going to marry anybody there. Fucking ugly. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? You're so mean. No, they were ugly. <laughs> I was getting that fuck personality. Fuck personality. No, it's not. Anybody that says, um, oh, looks don't matter. They're lying. I mean, looks don't matter. Look, looks always matter. You are not gonna be with someone you don't find f attractive. Why would you be with someone that you find fucking repulsive and ugly? Let's be real. Some of these people are so overwhelmed that they decide to end their lives. They often travel to Aoki Gahara, a suicide forest, to kill themselves. Another effect of their stressful lives is Jalhatsu, where tens of thousands of Japanese people go Great. missing every year. People who purposefully vanish from their lives and disappear. People sometimes are so overwhelmed. They have a forest where they do that. That's insane, man. Armed with work, they decide to disappear. Although, like, work should not push you to that extent. Like, you know what I don't like? I've always hated this, even when I worked like 10 hour shifts overnight. I hate when people brag about that. Like I was working a lot every week when I was working at like U UPS, USPS, FedEx and shit. Like I was working a lot, heavy work for hours and hours, like 60 plus hours a week almost sometimes, right? I wouldn't brag about that to anybody. I'm not gonna go up to somebody, oh, I work 60 hours a week. You don't know what work is. I don't want to fucking work 60 hours a week. I hate when people brag about that shit. You shouldn't brag about that. You shouldn't brag about how many hours of work you do. I think, yeah, it's weird. I think it's weird. I hate when people do that. And a lot of people do that to me. Oh, you just watch anime. I just worked 100 hours this week. Are you proud of that? I wouldn't want to work 100 hours. I've been close to that before. I did not want to live that life. You know what I mean? Like, I, that shouldn't be something to brag about. That's, that, that should be something you think about. And look wh how it pushes these people. These people work so many hours, they end up killing themselves. They end up dying because of it. Is that something to brag about? No. Like, that's not, it shouldn't be like that. Shouldn't the person watching the anime be bragging in that scenario? I would never brag about that. Ha, huh, you worked 100 hours? <laughs> I'm just sitting here watching anime. You know what? I would never say that. I don't think anybody should say that with their job. Like, you shouldn't brag about slaving away. Unless you love doing what you're doing. But I'm sorry. I don't think someone that's working 100 hours a week is loving what they're doing entirely. Even like a musician. 
a musician writing for 100 hours a week is still going to be fucking tired. They're not going to want to do that. They're dreaming of the day when they make that hit and they make millions and millions of dollars to the point where they could work one hour a month. They don't do it because they ha like want to. They do it because they have to. And if you're bragging about doing something you have to do, I don't think you should brag about that. I think it's cooler to say, oh, I worked 30 hours this week and I enjoyed it. I loved my job. I loved it. I think that's better to say. Cause that's a bigger brag to me. You know what I mean? Compared to a guy that says in a nasty way, like, oh, I worked 100 hours a week. And <laughs> you're complaining. To me, that's lame as fuck, bro. I hope you work 120 hours the next week. It's due to dementia. Some people escape due to domestic violence, debt, or the shame Fucking of white job cheats loss. on you. There's even a line of business that helps people to disappear called Yonigeya. Japanese are some of the friendliest people in the world. But yeah. That doesn't mean they don't discriminate. The country is famously homo- Of course they discriminate. Homogenous with over 98 points. Could you blame them? I'm gonna be honest with y'all. Like, I went to Japan. I'm always gonna talk about this trip. Wait till I go again, bro. I'm gonna flex it a second time. See, that's me flexing. If I was Japanese, I'd judge everybody too. All, every foreigner that came. I'm sorry, I would. 5% of the population being purely Japanese. However, there's the case of Hafu, or half Japanese people. These people often feel alienated as most people view them as foreigners. Some Korean and- Like, like, I'm gonna be honest with y'all, like, you go to Japan, most people, they're just, it's like, it's almost, I'm not saying this in the wrong way either. It's like a simulation, you know? They're just walking, they're walking, they're walking. And then you have some, uh, I don't know, like, a Logan Paul that comes by. Yo, well, what up, YouTube? Uh, welcome, uh, hit the like button, like the... I'm judging that motherfucker. I don't care about his skin color. I'm judging his ass. Go back to the States. Of course. They're so used to doing everything the same way. They're all respectful. They do things the, the same way, right? If somebody's not doing it, they're gonna look at them the wrong way. If somebody's jaywalking... If you're not stopping at the red light and you're still crossing the street, of course they're going to look at you weird. I think that's, it's just reality. And if you don't think that you'd be like that too, you're just wrong. You're just fucking wrong, bro. I don't even think it's racism. We hear the word racism and I feel like it's always fucking used. I don't think that's racist. I honestly don't. I don't. I don't know. Chinese hafu face discrimination as they're from countries that were colonized by Japan. This is especially true as well for black hafu. They face plenty of stereotypes, such as being good at basketball, funny, or liking rap music. Wait, wait. by Japan. This is especially true as well for black hafu. They face plenty of stereotypes, such as being good at basketball, funny, or liking rap music. You have to understand, right? You have to understand this, right? Your whole school is like 99.99999% japanese right you all come from like the same way of life you all like the same stuff maybe not the same stuff but you all have the same mannerisms um different personalities but at the end of the day you know nothing's abnormal nothing is out of normal right right everybody's like the same color and shit right then like a white kid comes to your school or a black kid comes to your school you're telling me that kid is not going to be looked at differently? Of course. If I entered a Japanese school, I understand that they look at me differently. I'd look at me differently if I were them. It's just how it is. It's just reality. You know, like, wow. I don't know how I'd react in a good way or a bad way. Like, oh, that's cool. There's a white guy here. Or what the fuck is a white guy here? Like, what is he doing here? It goes on both sides. It's going to happen. That's just how it is. And the Japan... They see black people on TV or white people on TV. That's their perception of them. If they see black people in rap videos or on basketball, they watch basketball. They see a bunch of black people playing basketball. That's what they're going to think he's into. Or a white guy. They might look at the white guy and think he's into shooting schools or some shit. You know what I mean? Or like he's into picking his nose and flick, flicking boogers. That's what they might think. It's like if you go to an all-white school and you have an Asian kid come to the school. They're thinking Karate Kid or some shit. You know what I mean? It's just how it is. That's just how it is. It's ignorant. You could think it's ignorant, but it's like, I don't know. It's, I, I don't know. I don't know what an analogy would be, but I think it's, I don't think it's racist. Unless you make it racist. Unless you're at the point where you're like, let's bully him. Let's bully this black kid. 
You know what I mean? Let's bully this white kid because he's white. That's different. But if you're thinking they're doing something because of their color, I don't really think that's completely racist if you're from that type of environment where nobody from a different race is there. I don't know, man. I just think that's just reality. That's just how it is. You know, like, I don't know. I think if I went to Africa, they wouldn't look at me different. You know? Or if I went to North Korea, they wouldn't look at me different. Well, that's 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 extreme. That's different. North Korea is different. <laughs> but it's just different. That's just how it is, man. As long as you don't make it negative. Like, if you don't say, um... Like, to think he likes basketball and rap, that's not racist to me. But then to bully him because he's black, that's different to me. That's different. That's wrong, right? It's just like me. You see a white kid. What do you think I'm into? You know what I mean? You think I yell at my mom or I yell at my dad or something. But then to bully me for being that, that's different. That's completely different. I don't know. Yeah, shooting schools, exactly. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, that's, that, that's still negative, you know? If you ever buy a phone in Japan, there's one little annoying detail to their cell phones you might have noticed. All their cell phones will have a shutter sound you can't turn off no matter what you do. For some people, this is an annoyance, but it can be life-changing for others. The reason behind this shutter sound is privacy concerns, so people can't take pictures they shouldn't be taking. The country has a- Wait, what? What? Do as well for funny or liking rap music. If you ever buy a phone in Japan, there's one little annoying detail to their cell phones you might have noticed. All their cell phones will have a shutter sound you can't turn off. Wow. Babe. Yeah? If you buy a phone in Japan, mm -hmm. every phone, you cannot turn the shutter sound off when you take a picture. No. You can't turn it off. No. It's permanently on. No. That's crazy. On an iPhone? That's crazy, bro. How old is I think that is a good idea. Because I think it's a good idea. Why? Because they're not going to want to do it in the first place because it's going to bother people, right? Mm -hmm. So now you could catch like pedophiles and perverts if they're taking pictures of kids or something. Because you're like, oh, what are they doing? They just took a picture. I don't know. I feel like it has its pluses and minuses. I, but like, imagine that was America. I can understand. I'd buy a gun. Like, I know. I, the sound of the shutter drives me fucking insane. I know. It'll, it, yeah. The sound of the clicking of the keyboard yeah. when you're texting drives me fucking insane. I can't stand See, it. that would not work in America, man. That would not work. They could just take a video, but yeah. You'd hear the video button. You can't lower the volume on the shutter sound. <laughs> you think the shutter sound has a volume? <laughs> Jariah had a camera. Exactly. Exactly. What if you mute the phone? You can't mute the, the... They said you can't mute it. You can't turn the shutter sound off. So every time you take a picture, it's like this. Wait, I don't even think I have it on. No, you don't. Let me, go, let me put it on. God damn, imagine that. Off no matter what you do. For some people, this is an annoyance. But it can be life-changing for others. The reason behind this shutter sound is privacy concerns. Yeah. So people can't take pictures they shouldn't be taking. The country has a lot of cases where people take unwanted pictures of others. Yeah, bro. Imagine like you're you're in a Japanese church and you hear this. Like I understand. I understand. <laughs> I understand in a way. It's like I'm not totally against it. I think it works there. It would never work here. It would never fucking work here. It would just piss me off. Because people have no respect here. I swear to God, you'll be on the train. I gotta delete all these pictures after this, bro. But I'll be on the train. You'll just hear this in America. That's all you'll hear. It'll be terrible. It'll be hell. That's when it went. Oh my God. I'll be on the news that night. The Japanese police saw a huge rise in voyeurism a 60% rise from 2007 to 2016. That's why this law was made, to protect vulnerable people, especially women. Even the tech mm. giant Apple agreed to customize the cell phones that they shipped to Japan. 
Wow. So although this might seem a little annoying to you, <laughs> what is this? it's made with good intentions and the overall purpose is to safeguard people's privacy. Japan is such an interesting country that I wanted to share a couple more interesting facts. Japan is the land of wacky inventions. <laughs> An umbrella tie. That's amazing. You don't got to carry it. Your hands are free. And when it rains, you just unclip it and put it on. That's actually extremely useful. Like this amazing cooling spray that people use during summertime. All you need to do is spray the foam onto your skin or a surface. I fuck. I need that now in my fucking room. You know how many times I complain about being hot? All I need is cooling spray. I'd spray that shit all over my body, bro. I'd be on the plane like, like, like this. <laughs> all over. We need to get this, babe. Cooling spray. Really? They have like cooling spray. You spray it on your, and it keeps you cool. Wow. I might actually get this. Bro, I'm fucking writing this down. Then take the foam and put it wherever you want on your body. You'll be cooled off in no time. It's Wait, it stays there? So I could wear like a cooling, I could spray it around my neck? Wait, that's actually pretty good. Oh my god. I never knew that existed. I'm buying it, I'm buying a fucking box. Seems that the Japanese are obsessed with beating the heat. Another innovation is called the fan jacket, where each jacket comes with air conditioning. What the fuck? They have jackets with air conditioning in them. What? Look. What the fuck? I gotta install that into this shirt. It's perfect for outdoor workers who want to stay breezy in a hot and sticky temperature. You know how many problems this would fix for me? My biggest problem in life, this shows you how privileged I am, right? And I'm not afraid to admit it. It's being hot. And I'm not talking about my looks, all right? I'm talking about sweating my balls sweating off. Right You're sweating right now? Sweating right yeah. Now. You know how much that would cure? You go to a park at Disney d during the summer. You don't got to worry. You go to a convention. You could wear this. This is what they all need, bro. They don't wear deodorant. This is what they need. Give them a fucking air conditioning jacket because they smell like nuts. Give them this. Another crazy invention is the overtime work stickers, where people will indicate to the public that they're currently working overtime, so please don't disturb them. Oh my god. That wouldn't work in New York, bro. They'd throw a fucking rock through the window. The country is also the inventor of the luxury fruit market. From yeah. a white jewel. Oh my god, dude, 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 dude. This is fucking crazy. And I've lived behind me to vouch. She probably knows more than me. You hear me? Yeah. Remember we went to that uh that mall. I don't know if it was a mall. Um and they have they were selling fruit that was like $300. Yeah. How much was the most expensive fruit? $500. What was it? Like a fucking apple or something? Like a melon. It was a melon. A $500 melon. I'm like, that that melon better give me fucking devil fruit powers, bro. I better eat that shit and be Luffy. You know what I mean? Like, that's crazy. That's fucking crazy to me. Imagine it doesn't taste good. I bet it doesn't. I bet it's not $500 worth of taste. I guarantee you. Ooh, better be a fucking devil fruit. Yeah. Berry to a like, seriously. Shape watermelon. Prices go up to ten. It looks like the Mario block. Ten thousand. Tens of thousands of dollars. That's why it's the best gift you can give. This watermelon better give me fucking wings. Give when visiting people. Japan is a beautiful country with amazing views and rich. Imagine like, depending on how much money something was, is how long you'll be satiated. Like how long you'll be full. Like imagine you ate a ten thousand dollar melon. And that made sure, like, you were not hungry for a month. Would you do that? Not a month. Uh, three months. If you eat this $10,000 melon, would you eat it? Would you eat it? Well, does it only make you not hungry, or does it have, You're like, full. You're, like, you, you don't no, need no, to eat. You're like, full. You're, you won't, like... You know how you feel after you eat Prime? Yeah, after, I know, but no... That, like, it gives you that feeling. That, is it going to have, like, health negatives? No, no health negatives. No health negatives. It's as if you're eating, like, breakfast, right? Yeah, that's it. I think I'd do it, bro. I, I'd, I'd do it. If that melon burned fat. It's like a nice 2,000 calorie melon that lasts three months if you eat it once. You'll be full. You don't got to eat for three months. 
uh, you spend 10k on food in three months? No, no, no. But it has like that uh, that uh, um, what's it called? Health bonus. Like you'll be able to diet. You don't have to worry about dieting. You can just work out and get a six pack. So when those three months are up, you're good. Conditions. <laughs> It also has its ah man, I'm buying like three of these products. Issues Shit. with crippling mental health and prejudice due to the way their society is shaped. Hopefully, the country Can't can look overcome at this. this and continue to be the dark side of Mexico, the dark side of Tibet. What's the dark side of every country, titties? One of the most inventive, Shit. And creative countries in the world. Imagine this beach. It looks like the dark side is just this. 